What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here and I want to give you a tour and show you what's new in Google's tasty dessert themed Android 2.3 called Gingerbread. To help me out here I've got an Android 2.2 device so I can illustrate the differences here on the Nexus 1 and 2.3 will be demonstrated on the Nexus S. Let's go ahead and get started. A lot of the additions to 2.3 are under the hood and things that the end user doesn't necessarily see as graphical enhancements, but there are some graphical changes and some tweaks that we can see and I want to go ahead and show you what each of those are. So first let's start down at the bottom. These now colored icons represent the call and browser buttons. We saw them on Android 2.2, but they didn't have that green color that they have now. That green theme also sort of comes into play with the status bar at the top. You can see the icons now have a green color to them, whereas before they did not. Another small change, the battery indicator here is horizontal. In 2.3, it is vertical. All right, so that's about it. Maybe the green theme was due to the Android little logo, but that's the main difference that you're going to see on the home screen. Uh, a very small minor tweak, which I really like, is what happens when you lock the device. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So I go ahead and lock the phone. You get sort of a cool, almost TV turning off effect. Sort of powers down like that. Very neat. Uh, you don't have anything similar on 2.2. Now, it's obviously not a giant thing. It's just a graphical, uh, but it's kind of fun to see. See it right there. And the unlock screens on both look identical. All right, so let's go ahead and continue our tour here. One of the things that I was hoping we were going to see in Android 2.3 was more utility in this pull-down tray. Uh, if you look at Galaxy S devices or other devices running TouchWiz, you have profile switchers and some other utilities you can do with that. Uh, we don't have any sort of extra functionality, just some new colors. So there's been another sort of small tweak here. Take a look at the dialer. The wrong button there. Let's jump into phone. You can see the dialer looks a little bit different. It's been skinned just a bit. Again, nothing major, but there is uh, sort of something new. Uh, you now have memory and application management right from the home screen, the main menu on the home screen. So I go ahead and hit the menu button. I now have something for manage apps. That was not there in Android 2.2. And you can manage your applications nice and easily. Perhaps Google realized there was a big market for third-party application management and they wanted their phone to sort of natively support that, at least relatively easy, and make it nice and simple to get to. So you can view your downloads, we'll talk about in just a minute, all your USB storage files, and what's running. So you might notice this says USB storage, this is more of a Galaxy S thing. Uh, it doesn't actually have expandable memory, but it treats some of the 16 gigs that it has uh, almost as external storage. It partitions it just a little bit. So that's in addition to Android 2.3. Let's go ahead and home screen out of here. Uh, if you look at a list in any sort of the um, menu items on 2.3, notice something different as well. So let's go ahead and jump into settings and I'll show you what that looks like. We'll do that on each device. So on Android 2.2, when you scroll to the bottom, you just get to the bottom. You don't get any sort of bouncy physics engine kind of thing. You just get to the bottom, it's a simple menu. Uh, you've got a bit more animations now on 2.3. You've got that little yellow or orangish color uh, bar that pops up of color. It lets you know that you're at a, uh, the bottom of a menu. It's a small graphical improvement, certainly nothing giant, uh, but it is something that 2.3 does that 2.2 does not. Uh, another nice addition to 2.3 is actually a download manager. It's an application uh, found right in your applications menu. And I'll go ahead and show you what that is. I've made a shortcut to it on the homepage. You can now access all of your downloads from your emails, from uh, for apps, whatever it is might, might be, whatever you've downloaded, you can now access and reopen uh, nice and easily in Android 2.3. Certainly a lot of these things that I'm going to mention that 2.3 does uh, could be accomplished with third-party support and older versions of Android, uh, but they are now built in. So one of the most noticeable differences in 2.3 is actually the keyboard. Let's go ahead and talk about that. We'll jump into messaging applications on each. Let's go ahead and find messages here. All right, so here are the keyboards. You notice that they do look noticeably different. Uh, on 2.2, this is a stock Android keyboard. Certainly there are many third-party keyboards you can put on here, like Swipe, which may make some of this obsolete. Uh, but if you're a fan of the native Android keyboards, you're going to want to pay attention. So on 2.2, the keys were very close together. You can move around and pick whatever key you wanted, uh, but it became a bit cramped when you were trying to type. 
On 2.3, the keys are a little bit spaced out, the fonts are a little bit different, and the typing experience seems to be much easier. Uh, another really big improvement in 2.3 that we didn't have in 2.2 is the ability to manipulate the text and show where you want to go and actually move the cursor where you'd like. So here we've got uh, 2.2, I had a message typed in there that says Winnie the Pooh sounds gross. If I want to move my cursor around, I got to sort of select it, pick the letter that I want. If I wanted to copy text, I'd have to hold it down. I could go ahead and copy all or copy a certain area if I wanted to select text. Um, you know, you can just copy and you get all those menus. Here on 2.3, they've made it a bit easier. So if I just sort of tap text, I get this new, I don't know, what's what to call that? It's called a little icon. Uh, it lets me move around and control where the cursor goes. Makes it very easy. Now, it makes, well, it makes it easy if you want to copy and uh, paste text as well. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do to make things just a bit easier. So if I tap this, and I want to, let's say, select a word. Uh, you'll now notice I've got two, so I can move this to control whatever words I want. It makes it a lot easier for copying and, uh, and for pasting long text. And that's definitely much welcomed improvement. All right, so one of the other things that, uh, actually that this particular Nexus S has that the Nexus One doesn't have, and again, this is particular uh, to the Nexus S, is something called NFC, which is a near field communications. It's a way to transmit data back and forth, although right now it's just one direction. Uh, for security. Uh, you also now have access to multiple cameras. Uh, the Nexus S in particular, which is currently the only Android 2.3 device, has a front-facing VGA camera as well. Let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. So before it was a little bit difficult to switch cameras. Now there's a menu option built right in, which lets you go to the front and back. And it obviously wasn't found on the Nexus 1 because you know, a front-facing camera. All right, so let's go ahead and go back home and let's continue the tour. Now there's a lot of stuff uh, under the hood as well that you're not gonna see or that the end user isn't gonna see uh, right away. Uh, they've improved uh, third-party support for video drivers, uh, which are going to be especially uh, apparent for 3D graphics. So gaming is going to look unnoticeably uh, better as developers get access to these new APIs. Uh, there also is a new AMR wideband, which is really going to new codec for that, which translates to supposedly uh, better video, or sorry, rather better audio fidelity uh, while making phone calls. So the sound quality is going to be a bit better. And there's a lot of new API support that developers can take advantage of. So really in conclusion, 2.3 is not a giant upgrade over 2.2. If you're running a 2.2 device, you don't necessarily have to be clamoring for 2.3. You're not going to get giant new features or a completely redone UI. Uh, they're very subtle changes. It's certainly welcome, but it's nothing revolutionary. Uh, very evolutionary changes here found in Android 2.3. So would you like to have seen anything added to Android 2.3 that you didn't get? Uh, are you waiting for the next version of Android, which is going to be called Honeycomb, whether it's 3.0 or 2.4, whatever Google decides to call it? Uh, anyway, guys, I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo with the highlights of what's new in Android 2.3. Bye-bye.